Hello everybody and welcome back to The Inclusion Coach. My name is Rebecca and I am your Inclusion Coach. This week we are unpacking the invisible knapsack. This is something that every aspiring ally needs to be aware of because it is the foundation, it is the bedrock of understanding privilege and how it impacts us, the people around us, and society in general. The invisible knapsack is a metaphor created by Peggy McIntosh, who is a feminist scholar, an anti-racism activist, and a very experienced researcher, particularly around women's studies. She was looking into the unearned power and privilege that men have in relation to women when she realized that logically it could be extended to white privilege, to the privileges that white people have in relation to African-American people in Peggy McIntosh's context. This is how she describes white privilege. White privilege is like an invisible, weightless knapsack of special provisions, maps, passports, code books, visas, clothes, tools, and blank checks. So in her essay, Peggy talks about, I hope she doesn't mind me calling her Peggy. She talks about having been taught in school that racism is a disadvantage for African-Americans and others. But nobody talked about the obvious consequence of that, you know, the balancing of that, which is that the advantages are conferred on people with white skin. The people who have unearned power and unearned privilege to the extent that they may not even be aware of those privileges that they have. And it ranged from small daily advantages through to big systemic advantages like white skin, white comfort being prioritized in things like education, employment, the way people interact with law enforcement and with the government. The Invisible Knapsack lists 46 different ways in which somebody with white skin might experience advantages when they are in a white dominated country. Here are just a few of them. I can turn on the television or open to the front page of the paper and see people of my race widely represented. I can arrange to protect my children most of the time from people who might not like them. When I'm told about our national heritage or about civilization, I'm shown that people of my colour made it what it is. If my day, week or year is going badly, I needn't ask of each negative episode or situation whether it has racial overtones. I can choose blemish cover or bandages in flesh colour that more or less match my skin tone. I can go into a music shop and count on finding the music of my race represented. Into a supermarket and find the staple foods that fit with my cultural traditions. Into a hairdresser's shop and find someone who can cut my hair. If you're watching this and you're white, you might be feeling quite uncomfortable right now, as well we all should. And the other 45 examples that appear in the Invisible Knapsack give a comprehensive list of examples of how white privilege and systemic racism show up in life every single day in ways that people with white skin may not even realise. I've put a link to the full essay in the comments. It's not a long essay, but it's very thought provoking. So if you're a white person watching this, I urge you to read that essay, to look at those 46 different potential privileges and think about them in relation to your own life. You'll also find 50 potential privileges that have more of a business focus in Karen Catlin's book, Better Allies. In the essay, Peggy McIntosh makes the observation that privilege may well confer power, but it does not confer moral strength. It is unearned power. 
And she relates it back to the women's studies, which started her on this path. And she observes that in women's studies or in gender equity, men can choose to be on the side of and be committed to and state their intention to be part of creating gender equity in whatever way they can in the world. Or they can say, no, I don't want to be part of that. And either way, there are very few consequences, very few downsides for people who choose not to be part of that. It's the same for people with white skin. We can choose to be part of the solution. We can recognize that although racism may not be our specific fault, it remains our responsibility. And Peggy herself asks in the essay, having described it, that is white privilege, what will I do to lessen or end it? That is the question for every single one of us who benefits from white privilege. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.